Steve Kerr. Or Game 5, pardon me. But I disagree with him here. It's easy to say after the fact. I thought it was easy to say before the fact, which is why I was on this set, in this seat, saying so before the fact. Mm. This is like, this is common sense right here to me. Absolutely. This is the, and by the way, medical science is somewhat a kind of common sense science. There are very precise sciences where you got to get it to the 10th decimal point, like astronomy, right? Medical science is inexact. There's an old expression. If you hear hoofbeats in North America, don't rule out zebras, but think horses first, mm. right? Like the, the could be a pronghorn or a bison, Max. I mean, it's a calf. Not a, let's say you're wrong, Perk. Let's say that it's it really was the calf and not right. it, because I agree with you. It looked like an Achilles to me off right. of that, right? But let's say it was a calf. <laughs> the calf and the Achilles are right there. Now you want me to believe after I was sitting on the set saying even if it's the calf, I think you risk a catastrophic injury because it looked like the Achilles. Then exactly that happens and now you want me to believe it's two freak occurrences completely disconnected as though it was his shoulder and then, no, it wasn't his shoulder. It was right here. It, the first the injury's right here and then the next injury's right here and I'm supposed to believe they're not connected when they're literally connected, right? It's common sense. It's common sense. Uh oh Y'all finish? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Wait, wait, wait. I know, I know you all want to hear from Stephen A. Let's get in a commercial break. He will respond as soon as we come back. More first take after the break. Stephen A. <laughs> recap quickly if you're just joining us um, and I want to pick up the conversation we were just having before the break. So we heard from Steve Kerr a little earlier and he basically said he would not change how he handled anything in terms of Kevin Durant playing in that game fought. No that's not what he said but hey never let facts get in the way of a good story right? He said they uh, factored in outside opinions from other medical staffs, not just the Warriors exclusively. Rich Kleinman, KD's representation was also a part of it, so it was a collective decision, and he wouldn't change how it was handled. Kendrick Perkins is here with us, said he completely disagrees. Stephen A., we haven't had a chance to hear from you. Let me say this. <clears throat> I respect both the opinions of Max, obviously my man Kendrick Perkins, and Jay Williams, who I saw speak on this issue on Get Up this morning. But as basically the patriarch of this show, since I've been here for many years, let me be, let me be very, very clear that there's an elevated level of responsibility that I feel. Mm -hmm. And so I need to make sure that we all understand the importance of something here. Nobody up here is a doctor. We listen to the Golden State Warriors. They say they were 100 percent assured that there was no Achilles involvement with the initial injury. Right. But Stephen A. Smith, what does that really mean? What does that really mean? The Golden State Warriors were 100% assured by who? The team doctor? That there, was no, that there was no potential for an Achilles injury? Kevin Durant, arguably the best player in the NBA, goes down in, I believe it was game five against the Houston Rockets in Golden State in, in a pivotal playoff matchup. They were hoping that they can get him back for game six. Steve Kerr refused to acknowledge at any point in the playoff that Kevin Durant was not going to come back. He refused to acknowledge that. So they, they had already created a timetable for him to come back. So even if they believed that it was a 10-week injury, they were going to make it a five-week injury if they could because they believed that Kevin Durant was going to leave at the end of the season anyway. So his best interests were no, were no longer copacetic with their best interests. It was strictly the calf injury. We've also heard, I know that I've heard from doctors who said, 30, 35, 40 years, they've never seen a calf injury turn into an Achilles injury. Well, maybe that should tell you that it was never a calf injury, Stephen A. Smith. Hello? So it's two completely separate things right there. That's what they say. Now, unless somebody here has a quote from a doctor telling me otherwise, I think we have a responsibility to be very, very careful about sitting there saying, how do you not know that the Achilles is going to rupture? when you had the calf injury because the real question is if as the doctors told you or you've heard that they've never heard in 30 to 40 years of a calf injury resulting in an achilles why are you not asking the question of whether or not the original diagnosis was honest and upfront what they're really telling you is that 
the original diagnosis was a, was an attempt at misdirection, Stephen A. Smith. That's basically say that when you go that far, and I'm not saying you did that, but what I'm saying is when you go that far, what you're saying is they knew the possibility existed that the man could rupture his Achilles and they give a damn. No, what he's really saying is that the injury was an Achilles the whole time and they lied. Maybe that, maybe that's so in some people's eyes. I'm not willing to go there. I'm not willing to go there. I know Bob Myers. I know Joe Laker. Well, Stephen A. Smith, we know that you're delusional. I mean, you're still holding on to them two patches of hair you got left. So we know that you're not willing to go to a lot of places. I know Steve Kerr. And more importantly, I know how highly intelligent Kevin Durant is. And so as a result of that, to me, the most profound statement came this morning on Get Up from Jay Williams, who obviously is tight with KD, right. has spoken with KD, and basically intimated, and you can, you can go back on Get Up, and I would encourage y'all to go online and look at the segment with Jay Williams on Get Up, where he's alluding to KD being basically told he was good to go. So in other words, somewhere along the way, if you're making that proclamation that the wrong information was given to KD, that's an entirely different thing than saying, excuse me, you know what? How could you not know it was an Achilles? There's plenty of doctors that'll tell you. One has nothing to do with the other. Whether they're connected or not, they'll tell you. The calf is the calf, the Achilles is the Achilles. Don't pair the two. That's what they'll say. So they may have either misdiagnosed it okay, originally but, but, or else there's a freak and, accident. And I'm saying to you, it, it could be, and what I'm saying to you is, I'm going to lead towards a freak accident. Because unless I know there was a misdiagnosis, I'll be damned if I'm going to go on national television and accuse the go to State Warriors of a misdiagnosis. Well, let me say well, maybe it was not a misdiagnosis. Maybe it was a disdiagnosis. Meaning what? A misdiagnosis is something that you do by mistake. A disdiagnosis is information that is dispensed that is purposefully wrong. And that's my contention. It's very obvious that, and, and beyond that, it's also very obvious that Kevin Durant was confederate in the disdiagnosis and how it was dispensed to the public. That he never really had an Achilles in the first place, that it was a calf injury. No, it wasn't a calf injury. It was an Achilles issue that, that you guys were trying to hide from the public because everyone knows that once you hear that term Achilles, that's like, whew, that's like the worst thing that you can get. I just want to be careful. Well, let me, well, I just want to be careful. Let me say this All right. real quick. Sure. That, that we know, and this is, you know, this is, this is true of the human condition. Incentives have, are, are a powerful force on people's behavior. Wait a minute. I don't just mean consciously. I don't just mean you know, this well, is you my want... best interest, therefore okay. I'm going to do it. Okay. I mean in ways people aren't even aware of. I heard you. That, that the Warriors had reason right. to want him out there. I got you. I think it's safe to say that when people look first take, they look forward to hearing me. And I, didn't, I shut my mouth for that entire last segment. Oh. I didn't say a word. Oh. I got a lot to say now. What I'm saying to you is this. I got it. And I get what I'm saying. But again, that's conjecture. We're talking about a situation where arguably the greatest player on the planet Earth is on in a hospital bed after having his Achilles surgically repaired and he's going to be out possibly a year. So now we got to get to, now we got to get down to this. Okay, was the risk worth it? That's where I turn to you, Kendrick Perkins. Okay, well, and I'm going to say to you, no, 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 I'm going, I'm going. Okay. I disagree with you, bro, and I'm going to tell you why I think the risk was worth it. I'm not talking about the Achilles, because okay. we didn't anticipate that. Right, right, I'm right. talking about the calf. Let's stick to the calf. Right. Well, we can't stick to the calf because, as you've already stated, almost every doctor that you've spoken to in the last 30 or 40 years would tell you that they've never heard of a calf injury resulting in an Achilles. So, according to your platform, you want to adhere to what the doctors say. So then it's very clear to me that the Golden State Warriors medical staff purposefully disdiagnosed everything. And also the doctors that KD most likely worked with told him that you have an Achilles issue and he let them know, look, can I still play on this? Is it possible that I might be able to play in the finals with, a, with an Achilles that seemed to be strained per se? I'm just going by what the precedent is. The precedent is that there's no correlation between a calf injury and an Achilles. I'm not going to believe that Kevin Durant is going to be the first person in the history of the earth who's going to tear an Achilles only because he had a calf injury. I'm just not believing that. Once it's laid out that there's no correlation between those two parts of the human body. I, I have to now believe that there was a disdiagnosis or there was some type of, of, of false information 
disinformation that has been propagated to the public to hide the severity of the injury. So Stephen A. Smith is kind of talking himself into a circle here. And that getting re-injured, here's my point. 30 million now, 31 and a half million next year player option. He could, if he sat home and ate a bowl of crunch berries and watched General Hospital and Young and the Wrestling, he'd get 31 and a half million dollars, right? Right. And we also... Right, but I have no idea why people keep talking about Kevin Durant accepting the option. Why would he do that? He could decline the option, declare himself a free agent, and make more money next year to still sit out. He knows himself that he can come back to Golden State and get the max, get the 40 mil, and just chill out next year. And then maybe even demand a trade at the end of next year, and Golden State will be happy to grant it to him. Because at least they would know that they were going to get something back for KD. So, I mean, there's no, there's no scenario where he would accept the option or pick up the option. That, that makes no sense whatsoever. Every team, practically every team in the league is going to offer him max dollars, even if he can't play next year because he's that great and he's worth waiting for. So now the question comes into play. Do I give you, do I put you out there to win a chip? Not a regular season game, because I saw them, you know, our very own Dominique Foxworth, who was also on Get Up this morning, and he said, if it were a regular season game, would you have played them? The answer would be no. So why would you play them in the finals? Because it's the finals. That's why. In other words, all I'm saying to you is this. And I'll give it to you after I say this. I'll give it to you after I say this. You're Kevin Durant, LeBron James, all of those guys. That's a different level. Kendrick Perkins has been. Yo, they become such a different team when Kevin Durant is out there. Because now all of a sudden, you, you got to put Kawhi Leonard on Kevin Durant. And no matter how great a defender Kawhi Leonard is, no one can guard Kevin Durant. He's basically a seven-foot shooting guard who's a great offensive player. So it's <laughs> Had he been able to play fully healthy, just say two games or three games, Golden State would have won this series. Three pro for years. Title in Boston. Back to back. Uh, listen, Doc Rivers once bragged it. When the start five is healthy, we never lose. Remember that you, right. KG, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, Rondo. We all know what we all know your credentials. You know, I got to know Kendrick Perkins back then. <laughs> and his rough and, and, and I and I love being loved by rough riders. You know what I'm saying? And Kend Pause. This is a rough rider. Don't get me started with you and Zach Randolph in the hallway. Oh, okay. Man. I know this, all right? I know what a rough rider you are. Here's my here's my point. I don't know the Kendrick Perkins that would have been hurt, but could go even if he was at 70% and he wasn't going. Right, but that's not really his point. Kendrick Perkins' point the whole time was more on the Golden State Warriors organization and how they should have stopped him. See, that's, that's the wrong example to use because the Boston Celtics actually stopped Kendrick from playing in Game 7. A title, okay. not regular season, fine, but you got it, you're 3-1. Down and you know that you are going to be the difference because you believe in Steph, you can believe in Clay. Right. And if I'm on the court, we go smoke these dudes and make history. I agree. And at, at 70%, you cannot tell me you ain't playing. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay, and listen, I'm not sitting up here, I'm not a doctor. Right. Right? But I also played with Kevin Durant and OKC when he had when he had the similar case. Right. Right? Okay. He had a similar calf strain, and it was an actual calf strain. I'm not... <laughs> he said, it was an actual calf strain. But I'm going to give you some insight. Sure, please. And please. give maximum insight. Please. You would know. And you would, would know. know. Kendrick Perkins talked like a black cowboy. <laughs> when you... I played 15 years in this league, all right? The doctors... I have no idea how. Because... <laughs> I guess they needed somebody to warm the end of the bench on a lot of these teams because no disrespect, brother. You had no skills whatsoever. Medical staffs, the coaches, they let the world know what they want you to know. Mm. So don't believe everything you hear. That's first thing first. They That's will, real. They will lie. All right. They will lie. Right. Okay. But you also just said that OKC was a great, great medical staff that no. wouldn't let him play. So yeah. guess what? Some of them tell the truth. What you made. In other words, what you just said about OKC. Right, but Stephen Esmond, what point are you really making? Kendrick Perkins did not state that every medical staff is going to lie about everything. But you're the one who have already made the point, or you've already tried to make the point, contrary to what Dominic Foxworthy stated about why would, why would they have Kevin Durant play in the finals. You said because it's the finals. So that means what? 
if you have a medical staff that's going to lie, they will be they will be more likely to lie when the finals are on the line than a regular season game is on the line, right? So. In other words, you were raving about OKC okay, yeah. so because, so because, because, because they had a. What I'm saying is, is because whether KD was 70, percent they had his best interest in heart. Got it. For his, for his career, right. for his, him as a person, right? Not competing for a title. And I'm gonna give you another example. Listen, I was in 2010. I tore my ACL. I could still run. I was still walking around for game seven of a Boston Celtics and Lakers, a, a Lakers uh, finals. finals. Okay. I did all my homework. I went Googled everything. I seen that the Warren Blair played for 12 years, just college and pro professionally, mm -hmm. without ACLs and even knee. Okay. Okay. And I went to the doctor and I said, hey, man. I'm going to put a brace on. I'm ready to rock. You know what the doctor and Doc Rivers told me? Perk, you'll sit your ass down. You're going to sit down because we care about you as a person, not about winning this title. And my whole thing is, is that, see, the love runs deeper than basketball for me for Kevin Durant. Sure. And when I talk about Kevin, and, and absolutely, listen, you don't never take getting to the finals for granted. Right. You know what I mean? You don't. But what about, the, what about the element, real quick, guys? What about the element that it wasn't just the Warriors KD also had his own doctor. And that goes, but, I to say, but, but this is what I'm saying, though, Stephen A. Smith. I reached out, okay, my agent, Rich Gray. I reached out to Rich Paul. Right. I asked Rich Paul, I said, hey, man, if LeBron was in that situation, would you let him play? He said, hell no, and you make sure you tell him that on first take when you... <laughs> on there in the morning. Right. Okay. And, then, and I put on the shit. But, but I didn't, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't say agent. What I'm saying to you is this. If you, Kendrick Perkins, got the Celtics doctors, right, and you've been cleared, MRI right. right, clears you, and then your own doctor clears you, right. what are you supposed to do? Okay, but listen, you still have people that's supposed to be in your corner to protect you. Right, they've been having two separate arguments for this entire segment. Kendrick Perkins has been consistent for the entire segment that he believes that the Golden State Warriors organization should have saved Kevin Durant from himself. Just because you can do something does not mean that you should. That's the overall crux of Kendrick Perkins' argument. That's when it goes back to the Kawhi Leonard situation. Right. Kawhi Leonard was clear to play. But are we talking but, about doctors or are we talking about representation? I want to say it, but it's... I'm Stephen A. Smith, I still don't believe that the doctors diagnosed it publicly the correct way, or at least what, what they found, what their findings were, were propagated to the public honestly. I just don't believe that. And the fact that you yourself have already stated that no doctor that you could find could attest to a correlation between a, uh, a calf injury and, and an Achilles heel injury. You yourself said that. Tells me, what that tells me is that whatever it was that Kevin Durant had, it was not honestly dispensed to the public. So that's where the suspicion arises for me. I do believe that Kevin Durant's doctor may have told him the same thing that Golden State's doctor told him which is that you have a heavily strained Achilles or maybe a slight, slight tear in the Achilles. And after four weeks of quote unquote rehab, maybe they told him that it should be, it should be healed enough for you to give it a go for three games. That to me is, is far more feasible and realistic than this notion that he had a calf injury before and then magically, mystically, he gets, a, you know, he gets an Achilles heel tear. I mean, and, and there's no connection between the two. I'm just not buying that. Say. I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there. Sure. Are you a doctor? I love this. Are you a doctor? <laughs> I'm not a doctor, Me. right? So those doctors, what's their excuse? Because if I knew and I'm not a doctor and exactly what I said happened, then what's the doctor? Hey, but listen, man. I agree with you, sir. Max, let me tell you something when I learned about tearing my ACL. Every doctor, it's not like they follow by a book. Every doctor has their own opinion. This is what I'm saying. They do research just like we oh, do. This is, this is what I'm saying. Well, most doctors are cold kids anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> just being real with you. Most of them are high on that white girl. Here is what I said before the injury. Okay. KD is not risking money. They'll, they'll all give him the max Absolutely. deal, right? I give He's max risking the rest attention. of his prime. Right yes. now, according to them, it's not catastrophic. But the risk he takes if he plays is that it becomes catastrophic. Well, their claim now is not that they misdiagnosed
produced originally. It's that is a, it is a freak coincidence. It's a one in a million situation that after a calf injury, according to them, that took him out for 32 days, he now has on the same leg, right next to it, an Achilles injury, and the two things are unrelated. So you don't believe Steve Kerr when Steve Kerr says, we thought the worst case scenario was that he would re-injure the calf. No, I don't believe that at all, Stephen A. Smith. I truly don't. No, no, real no, quick. That's all I'm gonna tell you, real quick. I'm one of the honest guys in this league. Yes, you are. But it's not very many. Like I said again, don't believe everything you hear. Okay. And, and I, I agree with you, sir. Not call Steve Kerr a liar. I don't think he is. I'm not, but I will say that I wouldn't call Steve Kerr necessarily a liar. I would call him a company man. I would call Steve Kerr someone who's very happy to be in the position that he's in. And I've already gone over Steve Kerr's history. I, I do think that, you know, there are some, you know, there are some murky origins to, to who he is as a person and why he's been placed where he's been placed. But that's neither here nor there. That's for a whole other video. Point being is this. Steve Kerr is a company man. The Golden State Warriors are a super liberal, quote unquote, super progressive organization. He's happy to be there and he's going to say what he needs to say in order to maintain his standing and his position with that organization. And I think that there's been a hush or at least some type of edict that has been issued to all the members of the Golden State Warriors organization, team, etc., to let them know that this is going to be the company line, that KD had a calf strain or whatever. And in all actuality, it may have been something wrong with his Achilles from the start. I've heard, I've heard everything from a calf strain to a calf tear to an Achilles strain. But once again, if the doctors are going to claim that there's no connection between a calf injury and an Achilles, then I'm forced to believe that it was an Achilles the whole time. Okay. Incentives act powerfully on people's behavior, whether they're aware of That's it or not. Okay, That's fair. I think it's fair. But I agree with you, though. We'll leave it there. I think it's fair to say this. They could be totally unrelated and they could be related. We don't know so that's your summation, Molly Karam. They could be totally unrelated or they could be related. So in, the, in other words, you have nothing to say as usual. But anyway, good job by Kendrick Perkins standing up for his friend.